Hey everyone, this is Kevin from thechesswebsite.com, and today we're in game number 10 of the 2018 World Chess Championship between the champion Magnus Carlsen and the challenger Fabiano Caruana. We've already had a historic start, nine straight draws in the World Championship, never has happened uh, in the World Championship. There's only three games left. Fabiano has the white pieces both today and in game number 12. If we have a tie in points after game 12, we will get some bonus chess in a form of rapid and blitz. I think Magnus Carlsen definitely has the advantage on that front since he is the best fast chess player in the world. But we'll go ahead and get into it with game number 10. Fabiano starting with the white pieces. Pawn to e4 as he's done so far in the past pretty frequently. And then pawn to c5. So Magnus Carlsen, the Sicilian defense as he has been so far in the tournament. Knight to f3, knight to c6, and then pawn d4. At the beginning of the tournament, we saw bishop to b5. And then just two games ago in game number eight, Fabiano goes back to pawn to d4. After the pawn captures, knight takes on d4, knight to f6, knight c3, and then pawn e5. This is exactly familiar to game number eight, the Lasker Pelican variation. If you remember from that, the knight to b5 is a pivotal move. If you're not familiar why, you can go back and watch that one. But pawn to d6. These players continue down the same line that they did before. Something you're, you're not going to see as often as we have in this tournament. It feels like they just keep playing the same lines back and forth, trying to figure out when the first player is going to play something different. Thought it may be Madness Carlson instead of bringing the knight to b8, as we talked about in the game before. Thought it might try knight to e7. Instead, continues down the same line. Pawn to a4, bishop here, e7, bishop e2, castle, castle on the king's side, knight here to d7. And then this is where Fabiano decides to try something different. In game number eight, we're on move 12 now. He played bishop here to d2, getting ready to push with his pawn. This is protecting it. Then he brought his knight back here to a3. But instead, in this game, game number 10, he plays pawn to B4. Magnus Carlsen at this point seemed a little annoyed. It took him over 10 minutes at this point to figure out where he wanted to go. Up until this point, all the moves have been extremely fast because they've memorized this game. They absolutely just played it, so they know every single thing that's going on. And usually, especially if you've just played a game, your entire team has analyzed every possible line going down. So my guess is, is he was fairly annoyed that there was not preparation from either himself or his team for this B4 move. Now, after the game, they asked him about this specific position, and he said he didn't feel like it was terrible, uh, but was not as prepared, did not expect pawn to B4 from Fabiano. Pawn to a6, forcing the knight to move. Thought he would even play this in game number eight. Instead, he played the pawn to f5 after the bishop came here to d2. But we see pawn a6, knight back to a3, and then pawn down to uh, a5. Pawn takes, rook recaptures, and the knight to c4. Rook protecting this pawn, also threatening the rook here on a5. So the rook comes back to a8. Yes, this is a semi-open file. If you do control a file with your rook, Typically wants to be something in the center of the board because that's where most sides are trying to control the center. So if it was on the C8 square, that's probably preferable right now. Uh, but does want to have somewhat control over here because Fabiano is really starting to look uh, in pressure on the queen side of the board. Bishop to e3 just adds another attacker eyeing both the bishop down on the queen side of the board. And then pawn to f5. Magnus Carlsen definitely needs to get some pieces involved into the action to have some sort of attack. He can't just allow Fabiano to overwhelm him on the queen side of the board. Pawn to a5. Pawn down to f4. Bishop up to b6. And I really like this position from Fabiano. If you look at that, at it, this is a great outpost uh, from Fabiano. All of his pieces are very active. He can get his light square bishop involved very easily as well. He's controlling the light squares. He has the most active piece right here on d5 because it is blocking so much of what black's trying to do. It has this backwards pawn on d6, and it's very hard for black to get his light square bishop involved, as an example. This also blocks the pawn here on b7. There's limited squares where the rook from a8 can get to. So uh, Fabiano has all the attacks going on right now, but this is attacking the queen. Queen's forced to come to e8, and then rook up to a3. 
it does want to swing over here to the king side, it can. Also, once the queen gets involved, the rook can swing over here to a1. You can double up and start to push this pawn over here on the a file. Queen comes down here to a g6, uh, both threatening the pawn on c2, but also just threatening this pawn on g2. Eventually, you could see the bishop come down to h3. Uh, this pawn is being pinned down. It's always good practice to get your queen on the same file as your opponent's king. Bad things can happen to your opponent if that happens. Even things like pawns to f3 can get tricky depending on how white's set up. Now bishop to c7, just threatening this pawn here on d6. Yes, the bishop and the queen are both protecting it, but white's just saying, hey, you need to tie up your pieces to defend because I'm starting a strong attack. The knight and both the bishop are attacking this backwards pawn. As soon as you can get this pawn off the board, you can start to march up this D pawn for Fabiano. Pawn to E4 and then king to H1. This pawn here on E4 would be a strong uh, support for pawn to F3. That's not something that Fabiano wants to deal with. He can see the pin coming. He knows the queen's here on G6. So he decides to go ahead and play king to H1. As we analyze this board position, Magnus Carlsen's in a tough spot. I definitely think Fabiano has a better position. How does Magnus Carlsen really get out of this? This pawn here on a5 is starting to push up the board. It is an annoyance. Very active pieces over here on the queen side. Wants to be active on the king side, but it's tough for him to get all of his pieces before white just dominates on the queen side of the board. And then all of a sudden, Magnus Carlsen comes up with a completely crazy idea, and it's pawned down to b5. Uh, giving up this pawn to material says, yeah, go ahead and take if you want. Now, if you're not too familiar with the move en passant, you can actually take with your pawn. He only has one opportunity on this game, this move only to take, but he can take right here. Uh, now, the rook is going to uh, come back if he wants to take. The knight's going to take right here. Uh, then... Magnus Carlsen could play pawn to f3, uh, and you can see pawn takes, knight comes down here to e5. He has a pretty strong attack out of this. He gave up a pawn to material, but at the end of that, uh, he has the attack he's looking for. The knight back here on a3 is no longer active in the game. The rooks have come off the board, doesn't have to worry as much about the queen side. So Magnus Carlsen looking to give up material just so he can have a fighting chance and be somewhat aggressive. Not, not a passive move as we've seen in the past. Now, Fabiano took about 14 minutes on this move. You look at this and you're just not really sure how to respond. You almost feel like there's got to be something else going on. Maybe if I, I take this pawn, bad things happen. So at the end of it, he decides not to take it. Instead, he plays knight up here to b6. Now the knight takes uh, the bishop takes here on b6, uh, and then queen to g5. Now, this is probably another spot where people were extremely confused. When he played the b5, the entire audience just went wild. You could hear them uh, if you're watching the videos because they were so excited. But the queen to g5 was just as puzzling. There wasn't as much excitement because people just weren't re really understanding what Magnus Carlsen was was doing here. This pawn here on b5, yes, he played down to b5 to just give it up, to have that advantage. But after Fabiano didn't take it, he can do something else to try to hold on to it or just play something like pawn to b4. Now he's just opening up the door for the bishop to take here on b5. And this is the best move for white, but it almost looks like a trap. If you're Fabiano, you're looking here, Magnus Carlsen took his time, played queen to g5. Something is going on. Why would he just give me this pawn on b5? I already have a strong attack over here on the queen side. Something doesn't feel right. Fabiano took a long time. You know, before these past couple moves, Fabiano had about a 30-minute advantage, but he took all of the time. Now they're about even in time because he just didn't know what to do. At the end of it, instead of the bishop taking on b5, he decided to play pawn to g3. At the end of it, they asked him about this position. He just said, I felt like I should have taken here, but I just didn't know what was going to happen, and I was running low on time. I felt like I needed to just play something a little safer. He played pawn to g3. 
So Magnus Carlsen pawn to b4, so just bettering his position each and every time. Magnus Carlsen definitely has the advantage, in my opinion, now. Rook to b3, just stopping uh, the threat of the pawn, continue to push down. Bishop to h3, so activating all the pieces. Rook to g1, pawn down here to f3, bishop moves. Bishop takes on f1, queen takes, and then queen over here to d5, just centralizing uh, and taking that material here on uh, d5. Yes, does give up the pawn on b4, but he was looking to give up that pawn a long time ago. Now he has the two central pawns. He has a very active position. You can see his opponent here, rook on g1 and queen on f1 is not exactly how Fabiano drew this up, especially with the, the king in the corner and his it's really tied down. Can't do much. The pawn here on f3 with a solid pawn structure here. I really like this position for Madness Cross. I think he's navigated very, very well. He put a bluff out there. His opponent did not call him. Now it's just a matter of execution for Madness Carlson. Queen moves back to e6, rook up to b5, and then bishop to d8. And this is a position where I felt like Magnus Carlson just for some reason, did not want to go for it. And it's pretty disappointing to see. There's no reason to give up your dark square bishop. If you have the advantage in the game, you don't want to start trading down, unless you have some massive material advantage. But both sides are equal in material. There's no reason in this position to say, yeah, I'll just go ahead and let's just trade off our bishops. Play something else. Play rook to c8. Uh, you know, start to attack some material. Have your opponents respond to that. Queen to b1. Have him tie up all of his pieces to defending. Rook down to c4. This is both defending your pawn here. It can't be chased off by the dark square bishop. And hey, this is going to give you a better fighting chance. Instead, he plays, in my opinion, a very disappointing bishop to d8. Queen here to e1, and then we see the exchange on b6. Pawn takes here on b6. Now there's a pass pawn for uh, Fabiano. Rook to b8, just stopping that threat. Queen to e3, protecting the pawn. Queen down to c4, attacking the pawn right here, as well as attacking the rook. Rook swings back to b2, just defending both itself as well as this pawn here on c2. Rook to b7, opening up for the rook to swing back to b8, just double barreling right there. Rook to d1, just getting involved into the center. Really just been hanging out here on g1, not doing too much. Now it's attacking this backward pawn here on d6. And then queen to e2, another disappointing move. Just says, hey, let's go ahead and trade off material. Rook to e1, we do see an exchange right here. Pawn to d5, pawn up here to h4. But this is an end game. It's so difficult for either of these players to win. They're, they're so equally matched. The double rook end game with the same amount of pawns. And neither of the king is really involved in the game so far. It's going to be very difficult right here to get anything but a draw. King to f7. You can see the king start to get involved into the game. Uh, and then rook up here to a6. There is one position that we get to where, you know, it's interesting here as far as how Magnus wants to continue. If he brings his king to d4, this is tricky because he's now opening up the door for Fabiano to run over on the king side of the board. Uh, if he doesn't, he's pretty much admitting that this is a drawn game. So Magnus Carlsen does fight a little bit longer. He plays king here to d4, uh, but then rook to b5 stops that. Says, yeah, you're not going to be doing too much. Yes, you could play something like king here to uh, c4, but rook to a5 really stops it. Pawn down to d4. Black doesn't have a huge threat here in the game. Instead, he decided to play uh, rook over here to d6, protect this backward pawn. Rook down a4, king comes back, says, yeah, I couldn't find anything. Rook to b4, king up here to e6. Uh, they didn't play too many moves beyond that. They started to uh, just move the rooks around, exchange some material. And at the end of the day, yes, Fabiano now has a pawn advantage, but this is still a drawn game. And so after 54 moves, they decide to draw 10 games in a row that they draw. I think Fabiano uh, feeling pretty good that he escaped this one. Madness Carlson, although at the beginning he was frustrated that he was not prepared for that B4 move on game number 12, felt like he gave himself a shot, said he tried to go for the victory, but at the end he just couldn't find anything. And by move 30, 
you know, you have the time controls uh, where you have 100 minutes for the first 40, and then after 40 moves, you get an additional 50 minutes. Well, 30 moves in the game, they both had 10 minutes left. So while we do look at this and say there's some missed opportunity, why do you play certain things? There was some time control uh, issues that both of the players had to go through. So in my opinion, they weren't playing optimally for some of the time. But definitely uh, would have liked to see Magnus Carlsen fight with more of the pieces instead of just trading down like he did. But 10 draws, we take a day off tomorrow, and then we come back for the final two days. Magnus Carlsen will lead us off game number 11 in two days, and then Fabiano will finish this off on game 12 for the normal classical portion. And then if there is a draw, again, we will have a tiebreaker. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hopefully you're enjoying the tournament and I will see you guys in two days for game number 11.